Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about static IP version 6 addresses and how we assign them. Now, assigning an address is a bit more complicated in IP version 6, especially when you compare it to IP version 4. So, although a lot has changed, a lot of things have remained the same. So, let's talk about the similarities first to IP version 4. So we still use DNS. Imagine if we didn't having to type in the entire 128-bit address uh, in IP version 6 to get to a web server. That really wouldn't fly. So we still use DNS. We still have the option to use DHCP, and we're going to circle back to DHCP later on. Now, devices also still use a default gateway. And for local traffic, devices still send packets directly to hosts on the same subnet. So the big difference isn't really what information we need in order to get a host online. In some cases, it's just how that basic information is learned that has really changed. Now there are two methods we can use to assign an IP version 6 address. The first one is the static method, and that's obviously what we're going to focus on in this tutorial. And the second one is the dynamic method. Now we're going to focus on the dynamic method in a dedicated tutorial. But the difference between these two should be pretty obvious. In the static approach, we have to manually configure the IP address. Whereas in the dynamic approach, we let it happen automatically in a sense. Now within each of these two approaches, we have a few different ways to do it. So in other words, with the static approach, we can either assign a slash 128 to a host or an interface. So configure the entire IP address, or we could do something that's a little bit different. And this is really new to IP version 6. We can assign a slash 64 to a host and then use something known as EUI64 format to complete the IP address. Now if that sounds a little bit strange, well it is, and we're going to look at the details of that in a minute. Now the dynamic approach also has two ways to go about it and we can use DHCP version 6 to assign an entire slash 128 to a host or we could use something pretty interesting known as stateless autoconfig. Well like I said we'll get into the details on the dynamic approach in the other tutorial. So let's take a look at how we assign a slash 128 to a host. Assigning a full slash 128 is pretty straightforward. All we would have to do in order to configure this router's FA00 interface with an IP version 6 address is we would jump into interface configuration mode and we would issue the IP version 6 address command and then we have to type out the entire 32 hexadecimal number followed by the slash notation. We have to state what prefix it is. Okay, so this is very similar to configuring an IP version 4 address. There's just a lot more work to do. Now let's take a look at the second static approach, and here we use something known as EUI64. Now with this method, we don't have to type out all 32 hexadecimal digits of the IP version 6 address, which I think is great. So we know that the structure of an IP version 6 address is the prefix followed by the interface ID. And we can always throw in some subnetting if we want to as well. Well, what's unique about this approach is that we don't have to tell the device what to use for the interface ID portion. In fact, all we have to do is tell it what to use for the prefix and it will determine its own interface ID. So one approach for the device is to use its MAC address for the interface ID. And this is known as the EUI64 format. It's relatively simple. We're going to break it down in, into a few steps so you can understand exactly how it works. So a device has this MAC address on an interface. The first thing it does is it splits its MAC address in two. Then it inserts these four hexadecimal digits, and it's always the same, FFFE. And it combines them all. Now we have four quartets. Because we couldn't use the MAC address by itself, it was too small, only three quartets. We needed four. So all we're doing is we're essentially inserting a new quartet. It's always the same value, FFFE, and we put it right in the middle. That's pretty straightforward. The weird bit 
to this approach actually involves a bit. In fact, the last step is we have to find the seventh bit of the MAC address, starting from the left, and we flip it to a binary one. So if you see here, it used to be zero, zero. And you know that each hexadecimal represents four bits. So if we need to find the seventh one, we need to list these two hexadecimal digits in binary. So you can see here, since there are two zeros, all we have are zeros. Well, all we have to do is count in, find the seventh bit position, and change it to a one. Because a zero means that the MAC address is globally unique. And a one means that it's been configured locally. And since that's what we're doing, we're changing the MAC address, that's why we have to change this bit position to a one. Okay, so that you can see here at the bottom, once we do that, the new value here is zero two. All right, so now this, these four quartets would now be our interface ID portion. Now this might seem a bit dynamic because the, uh, the device is determining its own interface ID. However, you still have to tell the device what prefix to use, and you also have to tell it that it should be using the EUI64 format. So that's why this is con uh, considered a, uh, a static approach to IP version 6 address assignment. So let's combine all of this into one example to really illustrate the EUI64 format. So here is the command in interface configuration mode of how to configure an interface to use the EUI64 format. You can see just like the first approach, we have the IP version 6 address command. And then after that, we have a prefix followed by the prefix number, slash 64. We are not configuring the entire 128 bits. So, like I mentioned, we state the prefix that the interface has to use, and then we tell it, use the EUI64 format. So here, if the device had a MAC address of this, after we issue this command, it would use this as its IP version 6 address. So you can see the first four quartets are the slash 64, the prefix that we just configured. And then we have our two portions of the MAC address, which were split in two. We inserted the FFFE and then combined it all together to create the new interface ID portion, which is four quartets. And that's really all there is to it to using the EUI 64 format. Okay, so let's review what we covered. We know that some things are still used in version 6, like DNS and DHCP and hosts still need a default gateway. And we know that in version 6, we can statically and dynamically assign IP addresses. Now, on the static approach, we can first assign an entire 32 hexadecimal digit, specifically state all 128 bits of an address. That's one approach. The other static approach is to assign a prefix and then let the device determine its own interface ID. And this is known as the EUI64 format. And that format basically states you take the address, the MAC address of the interface, you split it into insert FFFE, and then you flip the seventh bit, and then you put it all together, you have four quartets now, and that's the second half of your new statically assigned IP version 6 address. Okay, so that's it. That is the static approach to assigning IP version 6 addresses. Thanks for watching.